Welcome to Digital Asset News, or Dan for short. My name is Rob, and today we've got some pretty good news as we take a look at a, uh, the Warren Buffett-backed digital bank, new bank. Looks like they're going to be partnering up with Polygon. And this is just one more example of how I think that uh, crypto is definitely here to stay. Then we're going to take a look at uh, the old adage, do your own research, just how difficult that is. We're going to take a look at an example of Voyager. Then we're going to get into what we like to call as clown news, JP Morgan and Celsius. And lastly, as we talk about some good stuff, I have to bring in some uh, a, little, a little touch of, of, of uh, reality, which is we can go lower, so don't get complacent. So first things first, let's get into the good stuff. Uh, Buffett back digital bank, new bank, and Polygon looks like they are partnering up. And this is, it's a reason why I keep buying Polygon or Matic. Uh, I still dollar cost average, not as much as I uh, used to do. Uh, I'm just waiting for the Fed to capitulate uh, or to pivot, I should say. And right now I think uh, we could go lower, but I'm not sure. Ben, these are the things that uh, give me give me pause and say, wow, I think uh, we're, we're in the right place at the right time. So Brazil's new bank to introduce crypto as part of rewards program. Here's what's going on. On Wednesday, that's today, they announced plans to release its own crypto as part of a new customer rewards program. So first of all, that first sentence is not, I'm not liking that too much because when, uh, when centralized banks build their own uh, crypto, it's not a good it's, it's not a good start. JP Morgan has JP Morgan coin. And of course, we're looking at CBDCs. That's very centralized stuff. So when I first saw this, I almost stopped reading because I'm like, well, this is no good. However, just wait. The Warren Buffett-backed new bank said in a statement, to, uh, the new coin digital currency is expected to be launched in the first half of 2023. Its goal is to offer customers benefits such as discounts and perks as they accumulate new coins. Again, not earth shattering. It's just a, a discount program or uh, just customer perks, as they say. This follows a similar move by South American e-commerce giant uh, Mercado Libre, announced in August the creation of its loyalty program-related crypto Mercado coin. Funny. Uh, Polygon Tech, an Ethereum scaling blockchain developer, will provide tech and tech support for new coins expansion. So it looks like they're going to be, uh, I don't know if they're going to be building on top of this or they're just going to be giving advice, it, but it doesn't make much sense why Polygon would go in there and just say, we'll do this and do that and do this. I think for this to actually work, they probably want to build it. And that's why I think, again, Polygon can be quite big. New bank, new bank announced in May it would allow its Brazilian customers to make crypto transactions on its banking app. So again, I don't know exactly the details of what's being built on layer one or a side chain or whatnot, but of course Polygon is a side chain to, to Ethereum. I think it's good news and I think it's going to, it's going to help us as far as the holders of Polygon. And don't forget that. Uh, there's a couple of things to note. First of all, when I was thinking about, when I was looking at this, I'm like, what's New Bank? Is it really that big? Yeah, it's pretty big. It's, uh, it's got 70 million clients. That's not bad for a digital online bank. And uh, this looks like it's uh, mostly in the Latin American countries, but that's where we're seeing adoption. Uh, Latin America, Africa, uh, other countries, such in those regions. So I'm liking what I see. Also, don't forget, Polygon or Matic, uh, they've been making waves for a couple of different things. First of all, they were one of six uh, to be accepted into uh, the Disney uh, incubator program. And I'm not telling you to uh, invest into uh, Polygon or Matic. That's the Motley Fool and uh, their title. So I cannot give you financial advice, but just remember in mid July, it was announced that Polygon will be a participant in Walt Disney's Accelerator Program. It's a business development initiative designed to promote the growth of innovative companies from around the world. Disney has its sights set on blockchain. This is why they partnered up. Augmented reality, metaverse, NFTs, artificial intelligence, everything web three. Polygon was only one of six to be accepted in the program. And don't forget, they're also helping out with uh, Facebook now called Meta. Uh, as they added Ethereum, Polygon, and Flow NFT cross-posting between Facebook and Instagram. And then also, I mean, it's really cute that they're doing these things, but I think this is a bigger, a bigger one. This is Stripe. And if you own an online business, you know exactly what this is. It's a big pain, actually. And it's quite expensive, I might, uh, I might add. And Stripe came out a little bit ago and said, yeah, we're going to add on Polygon for payments. This is exactly what it is. Payments, or payouts, will take place over the Polygon network, which we chose for its low fees, speed, integration with Ethereum, and broad wallet compatibility, MetaMask, Coinbase Wallet, and Rainbow. So again, this is a global powerhouse for payments. Stripe 
And even they're getting into it. So when I take a look at all these things, I'm like, this might be a pretty good opportunity to be at the right place at the right time. Again, I can't tell you what the future will bring. And we're going to get into the do your own research type of thing in, in a second. But uh, this is, I think, positive news for Polygon and Matic holders. And surprise, I am biased. I actually own it. So let me know what you think about that. Is this going to propel Polygon just one more step? Or right now in the bear market and really nobody cares. And that would lead me to my next piece. Voyager, and do your own research. And this one was, it was a tweet from a uh, friend of the show, Patrick Ackerman. And uh, it was some documentation about three ACs, three AC capital, three arrows capital, excuse me, and how Voyager got involved with them. And before I read that, I'm just gonna make a quote here, which is what I said here in Twitter. I said, when people say, do your own research, how the hell are we gonna know what kind of nonsense is going on in the background? You won't know until it's almost too late. And that's the truth. So like for traditional stocks or equities, the S&P 500, you can get away with a set it and forget it. But in crypto, things move so fast, you gotta be on top of it. And even us, like for, for this channel, we know that I talked about Voyager quite a bit at the VGX token. And then when I found out about this loan, this was on... Uh, June 22nd, we put out a video and I said, I'm going to stop using, I'm going to pull off my crypto off of Voyager because of this uncollateralized loan. And you can look it up. There's a link in the description, uh, which sends you to that video. And then two weeks later, and of course we put up the rules too after that, two weeks later, they shut down withdrawals. So you really got to be on top of things. And this to me is just amazing. Here's what happened. It's very long. I'm just going to paraphrase for, uh, for time's sake. As of December 31st, 2021, Voyager held approximately almost $6 billion, 5.88 billion in crypto assets on its platform. That's a lot. But about half of it, $2.7 billion, has been loaned to various counterparties as part of Voyager's lending program. At the time, the largest individual counterparty was Alameda Research, which is led by Sam Bankman fried and FTX. And they borrowed 1.6 billion. No problems there. No problems because they took a look at their balance sheet. They did their due diligence, said, how much do you have for collateral? And we got enough. Everything was good. But that represented 61% of Voyager's loan book. These loans are made largely on an unsecured basis. Unsecured basis. However, profit and loss and different documents did show they have enough for, for collateral if the time came. In exchange for market-based returns and in Voyager's judgment, correspond with acceptable risk. I get that. I get that part. Here's what I don't get. This next part here, right in the middle. On February 11, 2022, Voyager and Three Rows Capital signed a mutual non-disclosure agreement to permit the exchange of confidential info between the firms they explored a lending relationship. I don't know if you knew about this. I didn't know about this, this, this partnership with Three Rows Capital. These are some of the things that uh, even if you were trying to do your own due diligence, very tough. On February 13th, Thoreau's Capital provided Voyager with a statement signed by one of its founders, Kyle Davies, containing only a single sentence stating that 3AC's NAV as of January 1st was $3.7 billion. That's, let me read that again. Kyle Davies contained only a single sentence stating that 3AC's NAV as of January 1st, 2022 was $3.7 billion. So it's like, hey, this is how much we have. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to do that next time when I go to the bank. Just so you know, bank, I have 3.7 billion signed Rob, and then go from there. See if that works out. Unlike other substantial borrowers of Voyager assets, 3AC did not provide a balance sheet, audited or unaudited. In response to Voyager's formal due diligence questionnaire, 3AC subsequently provided a description of its corporate structure, certificates of good standing, and incorporation, a copy of its AML policies and controls. So again, when we hear about these things about, you know, you just got to do your own research. Just get out there and, and get as much information as you possibly can. Some of, these, some of these things we'll never know. The things that are behind the scenes, we won't understand. And that's why it's important in this, I think, in the crypto market. Again, I'm not telling you what to do. This is what I do. Diversification. Because there are some projects that are going to go to the moon. And they have good backing. And they have a great team. And they have a good judgment calls. And they actually make it. And they navigate the problems that are all around us. These pitfalls. How many of those are going to make it? Not many. So when I hear people talk about, I put all everything into Doge. 
I put everything into Shiba Inu. I put everything into Polygon. I put everything into Bitcoin. I put everything to blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't know if that's the right thing for, for you because I don't know your situation. For me, I like to diversify. Again, doing your own research is very tough. Let me know where I'm off in that in the comment section or if you know a better way to do it because these things sometimes just don't get made public until it's almost too late. So that would take us to our next piece, the clown news. So with this one, we haven't done this in a while. And uh, it's good to have a little brevity of the situation. Look, the markets suck. The markets are moving sideways. I think that they're going to go down. But let's just have a little fun. And that's this. Former Celsius exec <laughs> joins JP Morgan as director of crypto regulatory policy. And I know everybody was bashing this. And I'm like, hey, uh, what better person to put in this position than someone who knows how to get all the around all the regulations? It's like putting a hacker in a position for your cybersecurity. That's who I'd want. You know, no one wants a virgin talking about sex. I mean, look, this is a pretty good hire in my opinion, but it is quite funny, I think. So former Celsius exec Aaron Iovan has joined JP Morgan Chase and company as executive director of digital assets regulatory policy. First of all, I didn't know they even had that uh, position. I would have applied for that. But I think it's, it's also worth noting that JP Morgan has a division or a job for digital assets regulatory policy. Days after the bank's chief exec, Jamie Dimon, blasted crypto as fraud and decentralized Ponzi schemes. Again, look at what they do and what they say. And the only way that we knew this was because there was an updated listing in uh, Aaron's bio and LinkedIn, but a spokesman for JP Morgan confirmed the hire, but declined to provide additional details. So they're like, yeah, he works here and that's it. And then also, um, if you want to know the most up-to-date things that are going on for the plan so we can get those, we can get our crypto back. I think everybody knows how much I got on there. No small change. There's two options. First of all, I can't cover everything, but follow Simon Dixon. He's the one that's uh, trying to get everything and make, make investors whole again. There is a link in the description to his channel. If you don't like Simon's version of, because uh, he, He's very concise and very engaging and very long on the videos. Simon will even say this. There's another channel, uh, Aaron Bennett. And Aaron does a great job of paraphrasing everything that's going on, just kind of breaking it down to bite-sized pieces. So you can watch an hour with, uh, with Simon and get all the information, or you can go to, to Aaron's channel and uh, he'll break it down in like 15, 20 minutes. So it's up to you. Again, there's a link in the description. And that's it. So that will conclude the clown news. I will turn off my filter. And lastly, we took a look at some good things. There's some good things going on. JP Morgan has, has a digital asset re regulatory department, apparently. Uh, <clears throat> Polygon working up with a uh, new bank, Warren Buffett. Now he's directly linked, I think, to crypto. But the next one is, I got to be honest with you, don't get complacent. We can go lower. And before I get to that, what I'm talking about is this. I know it's tough right now. Look, the market sucks, and but we still have to do the hard things to get to the promised land. Uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, and uh, sometimes it just gets tough. Now you guys know I do not like the cold weather. This is the temperature almost right now. That's why I'm wearing this fancy sweater that I've got on. But we still gotta do the hard things that suck. And some of those things are showing up every day, listening to the news, figuring out what's going on in crypto, figuring out if uh, it's, it's in your best interest to keep on investing or not, or thinking to yourself, you know, bear runs don't, la don't last forever. I think bull runs coming up and we do the hard things. So like even me, I got to do the hard things. Like I don't like swimming in this pool every day, especially when it's 60 or below. It's cold, it feels like daggers, but it's the things that you have to do because I know it's good for my health it's good for my stress level. It's good for uh, dopamine rush and all those things. And it's also good to reduce fat levels and keep me healthy, right? I don't want to do it, but damn it, I got to do it. It's the same thing with investing and, and crypto and digital assets. Sometimes you don't want to show up, but you got to show up. And I'm just here to say that I think we can still go lower. And if that happens, don't be surprised. I mean, I'm not a Oracle. I don't have a crystal ball, but there was some interesting similarities to what's going on right now, to what happened in the last cycle. So 
This is 2017. Oh, those are good days when Bitcoin was at 19,400. I'm just kidding. It's the same thing today. It's about how much Bitcoin is right now, five years ago. Jeez Louise. So, but you can see just the pattern here. We started at 19.4 and then we dropped big time. 7,500, 6,800. 7,500, somewhere around there. Then it went up and it went sideways and everything was good. And then we're just kind of chopping sideways. 7,300, 6,700. And it, this is what it feels like right now, right? August, September, October. It's the same thing over here. Look at this. Came up here. Well, a little bit higher than that. Then we dropped down and then we're just chopping sideways forever. And we're like, oh, this is it. This is the new low. This is how we're going. But then and again, October, whatever it is today, 18th. Wow, it's the 18th already. <laughs> 19,348. You're actually down if you bought at the very top. But here's what I want to remind everybody. What happened in a couple of weeks went like this. We still went down. We were at 6,300. And everybody thought that was, eh, 6,300 is not too bad. But we still dropped to, gosh, 3,400. 3,400. So even though this seems like this is what it is, it can still drop lower. Does that mean it will? No. I'm just trying to prepare you. Does that mean we can't go up? We can go up. Sure. Or you can continue to shop sideways. But if there's any history, like we took a, like we took a look at the cycles. In the last one, we dropped 85%. In 2017, we dropped 84%. And thus far, we've only dropped between 71 and 74%, depending on what you see. So those are just something to consider. And it's also another thing where I talk about diversification. So diversify. You don't have to do this, but sometimes I think to myself, maybe I should diversify a little bit. And that's why I wanna say thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring the video. Masterworks, fractionalized shares of our pieces. I've got two, a Banksy and a Basquiat. I don't own the whole thing, just fractionalized shares. And so far I'm up 40% since last year because I bought this in uh, October 13th. Hey, it's, almost, it's over a year, October 13th. Here's the performance that it's been doing so far on other types of uh, assets. And, Al, and actually, Alan came on the show. Alan Sokolitsky, he is the chief investment officer and this is what he said about the growth and correlation to other markets. Uh, the latest numbers I can tell you, we now have more than half a million registered users on our platform. Uh, those numbers are basically growing by the thousands. It seems like every uh, day that goes by. Um, at this point, we've now, we brought north of 130 paintings uh, to the platform to make available to investors. Uh, that's totaling roughly $600 million. More and more investors are starting to realize, wait, after the last several years and everything that Masterworks has demonstrated, it actually does look like the art market is, in fact, not correlated to any other major asset class. So we're getting a lot of interest, uh, even in the current market environment. So, look, that's just what I'm doing. And you can take a look at it. But just like Alan talked about, I know some more um, non-correlation. And just to put everybody's minds at ease a little bit, know that these are registered with the SEC because these are securities. They register every single penny with the SEC and uh, you can find all the data uh, right here. So uh, also, if you're looking to sign up, there's a link in the description, looks just like this. And we did a video on the nitty gritty of how that all works, but that's just one piece. It's a very small piece of my portfolio, but it's what I do and that's it. So look, that's it for today's video. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, that is the takes care of the news part. Now, if you want to stick around, we're going to go over uh, q and I'll answer all your questions to the best of my abilities, and we'll go from there. So if you got to take off, take off. You've been here for 19 minutes. Thanks for stopping by. Let's jump into a little Q&A and get from there. Bean from the Cryptoverse 2. I don't know what that is. Everybody loved Ben's channel. Ben had a good one about uh, will Bitcoin capitulate? I recommend everybody to take a look at that. Bicky says, it well, disclaimer, not financial or tax advice, channel and entertainment purposes only. Just an opinion, Dan is not an expert, as you can probably tell. Or a financial planner, perform your own research. Rob, did you say you're using CoinLedger for taxes? Yes, I've used them for the last...